Okay, and we're back with our Golden Cup uh, interview series, and I have the pleasure and excitement of introducing and having a face-to-face -face interview with someone that's that's really instrumental in the game of soccer. Uh, for you guys that don't know him, he has done literally everything that most people want to do, and that's play at the highest level and being able to impact uh, people on the field and off the field. I give to you guys uh, Mr. Paul Williams. Paul Williams, thank you for the time, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, well, you're welcome. Anytime. Absolutely. So I guess to start out right out the gate, I mean, we'd love to know just a little bit about, you know, you and your upbringing. Um, obviously, you have a funny accent that some people don't, some people recognize, some don't. But um, tell people where you're from and kind of like what was your upbringing like? So, um, as you said, I have a funny accent. I'm from London. <laughs> I'm from East London. Um, I've been playing soccer from I was probably about three years old. Mm -hmm. um, always had aspirations of becoming a professional soccer player. Played at school. Um, in the early years, I would say in the very early years of my playing career, I thought I would go pro around about 16. Um, didn't really have many opportunities and then I ended up playing semi-professional at around 17 mm -hmm. um, and semi-professional really is train two nights a week, play on a Saturday, you get paid a stipend, um, a good level but not really a, a major level um, and then I, I thought that my, my opportunity and avenue to get in would be through that semi-professional region. Um, and then I had trials at Fulham, I had trials at Spurs when I was around 19. Um, and is, it, is that normal for most players that no, have trials? No, no, at that no. Age? So uh, how it went back then is that by the age of 14, 15, you'd be with a pro club. Mm -hmm. You'd go through what they call like a youth training opera, um, scheme, a YTS. Um, and then from there you would sign pro and you would sign pro typically around the age of 17. Okay. Most, most players, 16, 17, they'd be signing their very first professional soccer contract. Um, How it's most commonly today, correct? To, well, yeah, but today I would say most players start in the, at the pro clubs in the UK around eight or nine. That's where they will start their journey um, and around 15, 16 is where they will get offered a contract of some description. So it hasn't changed drastically, although the entry level has gone down to around, as I said, I mean, that you've got players at six and seven that are wow. training for clubs wow. three, four nights a week. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's really tra tra changed the game. Um, so I had, I had trials at various clubs, didn't quite make it, was always told, you know, too small, not quite the right fit, Good skill, good this, good that, but not quite the right fit. Um, so during that time, I played semi-pro and I went out to work. I worked as uh, I worked in an accounts department, doing accounts during the day and playing soccer at night. Um, and then you had a big break. I had a massive break. I was playing for a semi-professional club called Woodford Town. Um, had the opportunity to try out at Charlton Athletic. Played really well in that this one game that they wanted me to play in. Uh, afterwards, the manager came in and offered me a contract. And you know, at, at the time, I was I was about 20, and you know, it was a first division or a Premier Division manager came in and and spoke to me personally and said, you know, I like what I see, and I'm going to offer you a contract. So it was like a, a, a massive deal for me. That's um, amazing. And so, how many years did you spend in the EPL? Or for some of you that don't know, um, that's the English Premier League, which is the highest level of soccer in England and arguably you know arguably the world arguably really. the world absolutely how many years did you spend playing in EPL um, so I just want to go back a step so my journey when I signed pro I put myself I gave myself a six month time frame to get into the first team mm -hmm. um, and after the first two or three training sessions I recognized that my level was so far behind the rest of the players. Um, it, w it wasn't even funny. I could, my first touch wasn't great. My awareness just, just wasn't there. So I kind of had to work really, really hard to try and get in the team. It took me two years to get into the first oh, wow. team. Um, 
a huge transition. I played in the reserves straight away and was the top goal scorer, scorer within three months. But you know, and all of that was due that tran that transformation on point or that transition. That was because in your formative years, you didn't you didn't necessarily get into the into those academies where you were consistently training at those high levels. Is that correct? Yeah, I would say that having the consistent training, being around players that are very very good. You know, my first touch at the level I played was okay. Mm -hmm. When I signed pro, I recognized my first touch was poor. Mm -hmm. You know, and, it, and it's, it's a stark realization that how good you feel that you are, mm -hmm. you're kind of down there. So Absolutely. I had to really work hard and do lots of extra training just to get my first touch right, to get my runs consistent. You know, just the game is just very different. I was very quick when I played semi-pro. When I turned pro, I was quick. I wasn't very quick. I was quick. So what you're saying, at the level you were at, you were amazing, but then there was a whole nother level that you needed to aspire to and you needed to you know, refine and improve your game ultimately. Yeah, and, and part of that, that education for me was I, after every game I would, in the reserves, I would watch every game. I'd go back and watch every video of every game and analyze my performance. I was hypercritical of my performance mm -hmm. um, and recognizing the areas that I needed to improve on and then do that on the training field. Um, and it took a, a, about two years. And then I got an opportunity to, to, to make my debut at Upton Park, which is okay. at West Ham, which is my, yep. my club. I had the opportunity to make my debut there. I invited all my friends, all my family, everyone I went to school with. Hmm. Um, and for me, that was my big break. We ended up winning the game 3-1. I scored two. Um, and from that moment there, That's a good day. I, I'd, had, I'd had arrived. And you know, I was a, a, a fully fledged professional player. That's amazing. That's amazing. So. How many, so, and how many goals in EPL do you have tallied? Uh, at the highest level, I would say probably around about 60, 70. Wow. And then across the board, there's probably another 50 at, at various levels, maybe the second division, the first division, etc. cetera. So, um, so you've scored over 100 goals in all competitions. In, yeah, you know, and, and I've scored for my country, I would say somewhere in the region of 15 goals. Wow, my, so you represented country. your country as well. Yeah, I was very fortunate in the first two seasons of, of making it pro. I was able to play for England 21s, then I played for England B, um, was part of the uh, World Cup squad to go to the World Cup. Um, and then I suffered an injury with my uh, knee. I got a, a cartilage injury, which kind of held me back for a little bit and unfortunately didn't make the opportunity to get in that World Cup uh, team, but I, w I played in a couple of games in the lead up to the sort of World Cup mm -hmm. in preparation. So um, I feel that I've been very lucky and very fortunate to have been at the right place at the right time. Well, I can tell you like this is that just hearing how you've ascended to that, to those realms, or excuse me, to that height in your career and to go through what you went through and, you know, the trials and tribulations and ultimately, you know, have that much success. I would say that the kids and everyone that comes in contact with you, I think they're the fortunate uh, fortunate and lucky ones to be around. Even for myself, I think it's a privilege to know that, you know, somebody with your type of knowledge, your type of background is one pouring into not only players, but also co uh, coaches and the next level. So, um, man, I, I know you got to get to coaching and I know you got a game to get to. Like, I appreciate your time. Uh, we're thankful that you're here, and, and I appreciate the interview for sure. The man, yeah. the myth, the legend, Paul, Mr. Paul, Mr. 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 Stonewheel. Paul, Paul, Paul Williams. Hey, you guys. Paul Williams, it's a pleasure to have him with us. Till the next series, if you see this guy, make sure you stop by, have a conversation with him. He's a, he's a pleasure to speak with. And once again, Paul, thanks for the time. You're welcome. We'll see you guys soon. Till next time. Peace out. All right.